Hey, what's going on guys? This is Steel Rain and welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year to you guys. And today we're going to be looking at the Race Day Quads Joshua Bardwell F4 Flight Controller. Now this is a pretty exciting flight controller from a well-known person in the community. Uh, just, just because he knows how to lay stuff out. Um, perfect board layout for the most part it seems. Even though I do have uh, a couple concerns. But we'll go ahead and uh, get into some of the specifications of, of this board. So first of all, it can handle 3 to a 6S LiPo, which is pretty good for you guys that want to run higher voltage on your motors and things like that. Um, perfect for the guys who want to run lower KV, more efficient motors on, on uh, higher voltage. Um, next is it has the STM32F4 processor, as you can see right there. You know, pretty standard. Uh, MPU 6000 gyro, low noise. Really reliable gyro, even though it's old. It's still one of the most reliable and noise-free gyros out there. Centrally located right there in the middle of the board. Uh, it has numerous outputs on the uh, on the board itself. Uh, it has three 5-volt outputs, uh, one 3.3-volt output for your Spectrum satellite, uh, one VBAT, and two 7.6 filtered outputs for your FPV camera and your VTX in the front and then the back. So, you know, I'll go ahead and get into the layout here in a few minutes. The regulator rating could only handle up to 1.2 amps, so, you know, it it's pretty decent. Not really high up there, but it's pretty much going to handle, you know, all your needs for the most part. So, uh, normal 36 by 36 layout uh, millimeter by, you know, with a 30 and a half by 30 and a half millimeter mounting hole so normal size board the the uh, current sensor up here where you solder on both your positive and negatives can handle up to 131 amps so you know pretty decent it's going to handle most most voltages out there i mean some guys are spiking upwards of you know 150 to 180 really depending but you know for the most part 131 amps is going to get you what you need there so um the Firmware, Betaflight firmware it's using is the CL Racing F4. Um, you know, pretty pretty standard. It's pretty reliable uh, firmware for from Betaflight. And I'd also like to say this is the second flight controller that I've actually reviewed that has a dedicated camera control so you could access and change your camera settings through your camera's OSD. So that's, that's always nice. Um, it's got... Two inverted UARTs, so no more hacks. Uh, one for the S bus and one for telemetry for smart port. So no more hacks for that. That's always nice. And uh, got SD card black box down there, and numerous numerous other things. So we'll go ahead and get into the layout here. And let me go ahead and just zoom in real fast. Sorry if it's giving a little bit of glare here, guys. But as you can see here, there's your camera control up there. You got camera signal. Um, you got your ground and 7.6 volt. Now, they, I think they chose, and from what I've read, they're choosing 7.6 volts because it gives you cleaner video on a lower voltage so you get less you know, interference in lines and things like that. Of course, your boot button there. And if you guys look the way it's laid out, perfect corner layout for your ESCs to attach to, you know, positive, negative. So up here is the front of the board. And what I really like about this, this entire layout is that your FBV camera will be up here. Everything attaches right here, making it really clean and easy to deal with. Um, but like I said, you know, all four corners. So this would be motor one, two, three, and four, since this is the front of the board. You know, real. it's going to be real nice and clean for you guys that are don't want wires going all over the place here. Um, you know, up here, RX6, you have your, uh, you know, your 3.3 volt or 5 volt up here, S bus and telemetry. Those are the, the uh, non-inverted or inverted. I guess it depends on how you want to look at it. And back here, you have some buzzer pads and LED pad, which we'll get to in a minute because I think there's few few things that this board could stand to change and we'll go ahead and talk about that here in a few minutes but you have your uh, your TX4 which is perfect for smart audio 
and that's right where you would uh, solder it up there. Your ground, 7.6 volt, you know, everything you're going to need right there for your VTX. So VTX in the back, camera in the front, and of course, you know, all goes through uh, Betaflight OSD. Go ahead and look at the bottom of the board here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and flip it around here. So there's your current shunt right there for your current sensing. You have your SD card reader, of course. Up here is where you're going to select. There's a solder bridge area where you could select either 5 volt or 3 volts. You know, uh, that, that way it changes some of these in case you don't need 5 volts. So not really much to the bottom of the board. And pretty much, guys, I mean, it's pretty simple, pretty nice layout, you know. Nice, nice and clean and everything like that. There's a few things I don't like about this board, which I think just barely miss the mark. No ESC telemetry going to these sides. Yeah, you could find a, a UART and twist all the uh, signal wires from your BL Heli, BL Heli 32 bit ESCs in and still get telemetry, but it's going to make it kind of a mess. It would have been nice if they were on the corners. Um, and another thing for Crossfire users, guys, there's only one fully broken out UART here. Now this thing has, uh, according to Betaflight and from what I've read in the manual, it's got four UARTs. Two of them are going to be taken up by your S-Bus receiver and your telemetry right off the bat. So there's two left, and one of them you're going to want for smart audio. Now the problem with that is that for Crossfire users, you need both a receiving and a transmitting UART. So what you, you guys are going to have to do for Crossfire is use right down here, you're going to have to use the RX4 and up here the TX4. So they're going to be split across the board to be able to use a Crossfire system for transmit and receive. And the fix for that is just to use the LED and soft serial uh, you know, for for your smart audio. That's the only way to do it because the only other broken out UART on here is uh, I believe it's RX6. So, and you need a you need another transmitting UART to be able to use Crossfire. So, pretty much you're gonna have to split the RX4 and TX4 right here to be able to use Crossfire and use Soft Serial on the LED pad to get everything working the way you guys want. So those are my only two big gripes. No ESC telemetry and not enough broken out UARTs. Personally, I think this board could have could have um, made you know had an advantage if it had those little pinhole um, like you know the solder pinholes a little bit smaller. That way you could have got a little bit more room on this board for a few extra uh, UARTs because some guys that want to use this on a long range build which a lot of guys are doing nowadays with six and seven inch rigs, They're, they want to run a few other things, few other peripherals, such as, uh, you know, uh, GPS. And with this board, it's not going to work that way, especially if you're using Crossfire. So you're going to be pretty, pretty limited when it comes to that. But other than that, you know, I think it's a pretty excellent board. Uh, Race Day Quads and Joshua Barbell did an excellent job on this board. Uh, goes for about... 34 35 bucks uh, different different websites I'll go ahead and list some down in the description and if I zoom out here guys I'm also going to mention that if you go to race day quads website I'm sure some of the other ones have it this is the most comprehensive and thorough flight controller instruction manual I've ever seen I mean I, I believe if you guys look it's it's pages upon pages that pretty much cover everything so anything you guys need to know about this particular flight controller, it's going to be in here and very well described by Joshua who wrote this manual himself. So with that, guys, I'm going to go ahead and call this review quits. Uh, if you enjoyed the review, please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the normal place below. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.